Hi, everyone. I've recently teamed up with another Ableton Live certified trainer to be able to bring you guys an exclusive, in-depth mixing and mastering course. My partner in crime is Jake Perrine. He is the author of Sound Design, Mixing and Mastering in Ableton Live, and literally wrote the book on this subject area. And Jake has graciously offered a couple of his professional tips for free as YouTube videos. So the video that we're gonna be covering today is a special technique using side chaining compression to be able to clean up your return tracks and make sure that they're not muddying up your mix. So if you guys like what you've seen and you're interested in the course, you can click the link below in the description field to this video and check out more information on our mixing and mastering course. And enjoy the video, cheers. Well, here's a little trick that you can use when you're using um, a send uh, effect that you want to have on the tail of some uh, particular instrument, but not necessarily on the content of it. Um, what I, by this I mean, listen to the saxophone here, and you will hear the delay. Uh, uh, I'm going to loop this little section. Um, you'll hear the delay all over the saxophone while it's playing because it delays into the next part. Now it has a lovely tail on it, and I'd love to hear it in between the saxophone lines, the delay. I'd love to hear that in between the saxophone lines, but not necessarily while it's playing. So I'm going to open up and here's a little trick. This works great on a vocal as well. When you want the vocal to stand out, but then have a bunch of delay stuff happening on it at the same time. Check this out. This is on the return track. Delay, EQ. Put the compressor on here. And I'm going to side chain the compressor to the saxophone track. All right. So what this says is that whenever the saxophone is playing adjust the volume of this return track down. That'll turn down the delays while the sax is playing, and then once it's done playing, it opens it up so that the delays can be heard. Clever, clever, clever. I'm going to use the opto setting for this, um, as it's kind of, uh, I like the kind of sluggishness of the opto compressor for this particular uh, application. Um, let's... Let's play with these settings a little bit and um, try and make the saxophone stand out by itself. That's a little better. So you notice that when it's playing, it's turning, the gain reduction is turning down. This is based not on the delay coming in, it's based on the sax track. So whenever the sax plays, it turns down the delays. Interesting. So, so now that should clean up the um, what's happening in the saxophone by itself. Let's listen. <laughs> Can you hear when I bypass that compressor, it just gets pretty cluttered pretty quickly. So that's one way to sort of isolate uh, an element um, that you might want to, um, you know, have stand out in the front, but uh, also have a delay on it at times. 